ideas, evaluation and commercialization. In other words, how do we generate ideas? How do we evaluate the best ones? And then how do we commercialize our ideas to turn them into effective and profitable creative businesses? So I'm going to mention some things about idea generation, um, the feasibility filter for sorting the best ideas, and thirdly, thinking ahead about the, the business model uh, in terms of commercialization. So firstly, how do we generate ideas? Well, as we know, as creative people, and everybody is creative to some extent, uh, we have these ideas at random moments, sometimes you know, in the shower or taking a walk in the park or whatever it might be, um, and that's good. But there are actually techniques where we can deliberately generate ideas. And this might be used in the workplace where a team gets together to think of new ideas for new products or services or better customer experiences or whatever it might be. And there are a couple of things to say. One is that a lot of these team meetings of that kind are a disaster. And the reason is because we are mixing uh, idea generation and idea evaluation. In other words, and I'm sure you've seen it happen, um, the, the team leader uh, will say, OK, guys, you know, do we have any new ideas, please? And somebody will um, come up with an idea and immediately somebody else will criticise it and knock it down, say why it won't work. And that person you know, who thought of the idea you know, just decides never to bother again because they're just going to be criticised and uh, knocked down. So that's why these meetings don't work. And so when I run these kind of um, idea generation meetings in workshops for businesses in the creative sector and elsewhere, um, we do things in two stages. The first part is to all of us think about ideas together without criticizing them, without evaluating them. So we're in idea generation mode and we all do that. We, it can become almost like a game. It can be great fun where we're thinking of ideas, many of which are crazy, but we just keep going and going. And, you know, very quickly we can think of perhaps a hundred ideas. And then after taking a break, we change mode. It's as if we change gears in our head and all become um, not so creative, but much more analytical and critical. And then all in harmony, we look at those ideas together with a critical gaze. We take the hundred ideas and we sift them, we um, evaluate them and probably end up with less than 10. And it might be only three or four or even two out of a hundred ideas that we want to focus on further because we filtered out the rest by being analytical, by recognizing what's not practical, can't be done at this moment, it's gonna to take too much money or effort or is too risky or many other reasons why we don't pursue an idea right now. Now, we can also use uh, deliberate techniques to provoke ideas. And these are kind of, in some ways crazy, but very effective. And I run them uh, in workshops with people. And the important thing is to get into the mood, to understand that we're playing a game, but a serious game, to generate ideas. And there are many techniques we can use. But very briefly, uh, a couple of them are, are these. One is to reframe the question. So instead of asking how might we make the theatre performance more enjoyable for our customers, we ask a slightly different and wider question, which is how can we make the whole, um, the whole experience of the evening more enjoyable and valid and useful for the customer, the audience? And by moving the question out of just what happens in a theatre, we can then address the wider experience of perhaps finding parking, um, going out for a meal beforehand, you know, safety and comfort, and everything that happens to those people outside the, the theatre itself um, in the wider experience of a whole nice evening out. Another one is um, the, 
what you might call back to front thinking. We think about how we want to improve things, but we can play a game and it's a, a mischievous, fun kind of game. And when people are in the mood, they really enjoy it and we think of lots of ideas. Um, it's about not how we could make something better, but how we would actually deliberately make it worse. This might be in terms of customer experience or, or adjustments to a product or a service. And by playing this silly game of deliberately making things worse, we can then, you know, after, after doing that, we can turn it round and find areas that we must protect or enhance. Um, and it just helps us to get insights into how actually we can improve things uh, after considering in a silly but creative and useful way how we would make them worse. And the third idea would be very much about, um, this is called the, uh, the pre-mortem. Now, we all know what a post-mortem is, and literally a post-mortem is to identify the cause of death of, of a body. But, um, and we do post-mortems in business. When a project goes wrong, when we have a failure of any kind, we get the team together, we, we consider what went wrong, what lessons we can learn from the future, etc. And that's a valid thing to do. But it's too late at that point. Now, a pre-mortem is to do the post-mortem in advance. And so you get the team leader or the boss saying to people, we're starting a project right now, but I'm worried that it might fail. I just have a, had a nightmare last night in which, you know, a year ahead, we'll be looking back on this as a failure. Why might that be? What will we say at that point? What will be the lessons we will learn for the future? Because if we can identify those things now, we can fix them now and it won't be a failure at all. So it's actually an invitation to think of problems, not to be negative, not so that we become negative thinkers, but to be aware and to uh, speak up about potential problems so that we can solve them in advance. So this is the opposite of what you might call positive thinking, where everybody says, yes, it's going to be great. Uh, because in those kind of meetings, somebody with a genuine concern won't speak up because they will be called you know, negative. We want to bring out those negative thoughts, those concerns, those potential problems, so that we can solve them in advance. So this is not at all negative, it's absolutely positive. And that's the, the pre-mortem, and they're just a few uh, idea generation techniques. Now having um, generated these ideas, we probably have still too many that we can actually deliver because of resources. So we need to evaluate somehow which are the best. And we can use our own um, criteria by which we judge which are the best. And I would suggest that we look at, for, for example, where do we have competitive advantage? Is this something that we can do better than others or others can't do it at all? Are we playing our competitive advantage here? And then secondly, is it gonna produce the right results? And that usually means the most profits in a commercial business, but it could mean other um, successes about um, reaching new audiences, uh, it could be uh, about social change, or whatever your criteria for success are. So we can create a, what I would call a feasibility filter, which I've written about in my book, T-Shirts and Suits, A Guide to the Business Cre of Creativity. And this is a way of plotting on a kind of graph these different ideas we have, so that we can identify those that fulfill our various objectives. It's a way of prioritizing and filtering and sorting all these different ideas so we can identify the best of them and then pursue those in the right order. And then thirdly, we need to think ahead about the business model. So when we're thinking about an idea, it might be a cool idea or a great product or a new service. We can also think about what is the future in terms of growth, and scalability. You know, is there some kind of intellectual property within it that we can scale? 
that we can license perhaps. So there are many other dimensions um, about the future business model that we should take into account when we're um, deciding which ideas to pursue and which ideas to deprioritize. So it's a big area about generating ideas, evaluating them, and then commercializing them. But that's exactly what creative industries and creative entrepreneurship is all about.